Welcome everyone, and I see a nice big group. Everybody's getting themselves ready. Um, you don't necessarily need straws today, but if you brought your straw, that's fine. Um, the only tool that you really need is a Dynaband or an exercise tube um, and or, or a towel, a long towel, all right? The theme of today will be forearms, shins and calves, and alignment and posture and core kind of falls under that that umbrella as well so um just to give you a little update on on what we're doing today a little preview and um, all you'll need again is a dynaband or sure. if you prefer to use a, a long towel you could do that um that's absolutely fine all I right want to say, um, uh, Teresa. yes if you used a balloon instead of a straw, would it do the same thing? Um, you know, they're they're both different, but they're both working on lung capacity and strengthening mm -hmm. the lungs, strengthening your diaphragm. So um, if you if you have a balloon, that's you can use it when we do our deep deep breaths, inhale and exhale forcefully. When, um, you know, when we switch over to do some straw breathing, um, imagine you have a straw and you're just breathing in and out through the straw. So mm -hmm. we'll do both. And uh, you don't necessarily need a balloon and straws. I know sometimes it, both of those items are hard to come by if you don't happen to have them around the house. Um, and I don't okay. want anybody to have to go uh, buy any, uh, any special equipment. Uh, you can always just imagine that you are using a balloon or a straw. But they, they both work the lungs, work on lung capacity, a diaphragm, um, but they are a little bit different. Yeah, we'll be doing both, all right? Okay. But uh -huh. today's <laughs> All right, good to good to see you, uh, Carolyn, and nice to nice to Thank nice you. to have your question. All questions are welcome. All right. So again, today's theme: forearms and lower leg, calves and shins. Um, alignment and posture, and of course, we'll be doing our br breath work a little in the beginning and a little bit at the end. Um, so have your straw and balloon handy if you have it. Otherwise, all you will need is a Dynaband and and or an exercise tube or a long towel, okay? Um, we'll start out with from our toes all the way to the top of our head as far as getting ourselves lined up uh, in the proper optimal alignment. Toes, knees, and hips are like train tracks. It's as if you're standing on train tracks and your legs are pretty solid you know, going right along the lines of the train tracks. Your knees aren't knocking in or bowing out, um, and you have that nice stability, that nice base of support. You're also sitting on the edge of your chair, not all the way back and rounded. Um, you can be back a little bit farther if you feel more comfortable and maybe have a pillow supporting your lower back if you need a little extra support. But otherwise, trying to use the ab and core muscles and the strength of your legs for balance and stability so that when we're out and about walking and running errands, you have those muscles ready for you. They're strong, they're used to working, and they're ready for you when you're out and about just doing your, your regular daily activities, okay? So relax your toes and then think about lengthening them. So they're relaxed, but try to stretch them. And then feel the big toe. Allow the big toe to press down into the floor like you're trying to make an imprint on the floor with the pad of your big toe, the underneath the, the bottom portion of your big toe. Pressing down kind of like you're trying to push a stamp on, a, on, a, on an envelope. And then allow the arch of the foot. That'll help activate the arch of the foot. Whether you have flat feet, normal feet, or high arches, this really does help access and, and it channels energy and exercise into the arches. Having your ankles stable. So in other words, your ankles shouldn't be rolling in or out. Nice and stable. Also, the knees are tracking, as I mentioned a little bit earlier. Your heels are pressing down and feel a little bit of that energy going into the calves and the hamstrings. So you're really already activating your muscles. Think about pulling your kneecaps up towards the ceiling and up towards your shoulders so that you're kind of pulling them up, activating your quadricep, the front upper thigh. 
Then you're sitting up high in your sits bones. You can tilt to the right and sort of get that uh, glute muscle out of the way. Tilt to the left, get the glute muscle out of the way, either by thought or physically. You're actually moving uh, the muscle out and away towards the back of the chair. And that'll allow for that nice sits bones, uh, pelvic stabilization kind of base. Now let's move up. So we've gotten from our toes to heels up through to our hips and glutes. Now think about your pelvis. So you don't want the pelvis to be over arched and rocked backward or too much of a pelvic tilt and tucked under. So you want that pelvis like a bowl of water to be upright, not spilling out the back or spilling out the front or to the right or the left. You have that nice stability and a lift moving up. Getting into the navel, you're pulling the navel in and up, and you're activating your lower spine, your lower back. You're stretching the muscles along the vertebrae. So as if somebody were to take, a, take you up from your rib cage, giving you a little bit of a lift. Shoulders are down and back. The back of the shoulders are contracted. The shoulder blades are contracted. And in contracting the back, you're opening naturally the chest and front shoulders. So the back is contracting, the chest is, is stretching. And then your head is lengthening up towards the ceiling. The chin is slightly down. So the bottom of the chin is parallel to the floor. And then as if two fingers were gently pulling your head back or pressing your head back, you're lengthening the back of the neck. So you're lifting up, reaching back, lowering a little bit and also getting a nice kind of a press back. So the head is directly in the, in the middle of a chest, shoulder and upper back. In other words, the head isn't forward, kind of hanging out on its own without the support of the chest, shoulders and upper back. So it'll kind of el uh, eliminate hopefully tension in the neck and upper back. And then your back tip of the ear, is in line with this little marble in your shoulder. So there's a lot that we just went through. I go through this a lot. Every other week, I go through it more thoroughly. But every time you hear it, pick one little thing, add it to your repertoire of your alignment and posture. All right? So let's start with our arms down. You're going to scoop up oxygen up. And then like a waterfall, your arms are coming down in front. And then again, scoop the oxygen up. And then exhale like a waterfall, the fingertips come down in front of your abdominal. And then again, two more times, inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Roll the right shoulder back and the left, right and left, four and three, two, and reverse. Let's go with the left and right, left and right, four more. And now both shoulders back. And if this, for whatever reason, feels uncomfortable, or there's a bit of resistance, or you're not in a pain-free range of motion, continue to do single alternating arm circle backs. Otherwise, try both. This actually is more of a workout. You'll be working the trapezius, the upper back, the upper shoulders a bit more, the neck, and upper, upper chest. And reverse direction and forward. Again, both or alternating. Working through a pain-free range of motion is really important. And every day is a different day. So you just check in with yourself, even if it's an exercise that felt comfortable last week or two weeks ago, just modify if it's giving you a little feedback today. And then roll the shoulders back, four and three, two and one. Place the hands on your hips and you're just going to rotate your torso to the right, and to the left, to the right, and to the left. You're warming up your lower back. This is a dynamic or rhythmic spinal twist, warming up the spine. If you'd like a little bit of an extra 
Range of motion for the upper neck. Look over the right shoulder, look over the left. Look over the right and look over the left. And two more. And one more. And then look straight ahead. Now shake out your arms, placing your fingertips right on the shoulders. So right at that knobby, little, little knobby protrusion out the top of the shoulder, roll the shoulders back, open and stretch the chest. Same exercise, twist right and twist left. Try to keep the elbows sloping down below shoulder height. Feel that the arms are actually moving back behind you instead of forward. So the elbows are pointing back and four more. And then hold it here. Relax your arms, shake it out. And then take your right foot forward and left leg back. Reach both arms up over your head. Now, sometimes just this motion hoists the shoulders up towards the ears. Just drop the shoulders down. Feel the shoulder drop down. The arms are still lengthening. And the chest is open and shoulder blades are contracting. And now just reach right and left. So you're reaching the right arm up and left. More from the torso than the shoulders. Instead of hoisting the shoulders up, it's not gonna hurt you, but I really want you to, to kind of open up all those intercostal muscles between the ribs, the waistline muscles, the lower back, erector spinae, the muscles along the side, the, along the spine. And let's go for four more, four and three. And then both arms up, reach, reach, reach. And then relax down. Change legs, left foot forward, right leg back, inhale, arms up. Again, both arms stretching, shoulders are down, chest is forward, shoulder blades down and back. Reach now left and right. So you're reaching with the torso and the rib cage. Your abdominals are nice and tight. Shoulder blades are as contracted as they can be with your arms above your head. And we'll go for four more. Really stretch the waistline. Four. And one. And relax. Woo! Bring your feet together. Hands back onto the hips. Right toe into the floor and circle around that right ankle. So your ankle, your knee, and your hip is getting a nice loosening warm up. And reverse direction. Other way. And one more time, reverse direction. And place that right foot to the floor. Now the left toe is into the floor and circle around, ankle, knee, and hip. And then reverse direction, go as slowly or as up-tempo as you'd like, whatever feels comfortable, moving through a pain-free range of motion. And relax. Great. And then march it out. Let's pump some oxygen into our body. Pump the arms at your side. Your shoulders are just naturally swiveling within that shoulder joint forward and back. But try not to round your back and try not to contract the front shoulder and chest. So you want to stay lifted and tall and visualize that there's a nice open space in the shoulders as well as the hips. And a kind of a nice uh, way to do that is by just visualizing that your spine is lengthening and expanding with breath, as well as the shoulders, and your front thigh, your femur bone, is lengthening towards your computer, towards the phone, and filling with breath. So you have to use a little creative visualization here to get the right effect. But keep on lengthening, continue to open up those joints and breathe nice deep breaths in through the nose and exhaling out from the mouth and or nose. But try to do most of your breathing in through the nose. And then relax and quiet the feet. Inhale, arms up and exhale. And then again, inhale and exhale. 
Please place your right foot forward and left leg back. Your palms are facing down. You're just going to have your fingertips point to the floor and the fingertips come up towards the ceiling. Fingertips to the floor and ceiling. Arms are extended out at shoulder height or slightly below. And you're working through that lower arm, the forearm. If this is tiring for the shoulders, continue the motion of the wrist and hand with your elbows close to your body. This is perfectly fine. You're not cheating. You're not doing an easier version. It's just if your shoulders are getting a little bit tired, you're just modifying. And let's go for four more. Four and three and two and one. And then just gently shake out the hands. Change legs. We're going to do the same exercise, but with fists. So we're progressing. We're adding intensity. Arms are extended out or at 90. And you're just reaching those fists down. Now go easy. This is a bit harder. You'll feel more tension. Pain-free range of motion up and down. It's like you have a rolling pin and you're rolling up and down, swiveling just from that hip of the um, wrist. And up and down, up and down. Go a little bit more slowly. If you have carpal tunnel, tennis elbow, rotator cuff even, arthritis in the hand, wrist or thumb. And neutral and shake it out and relax. Take your uh, right foot forward and left leg back again. And now we're going to take your arms out or here and circle. So now we're making a fist and circling. Minimal movement in the shoulder and the elbow. You'll probably get a little bit of motion in the elbow, but it shouldn't be a big move like this. You really want to isolate the wrist so that your forearms really, really warm up. And then reverse direction. And these exercises look very gentle, but they can really pack a punch. So listen to your body, listen to your gut, your internal voice. If you feel like you've had enough, you're done. It's either two, four, or eight, but wherever you feel the point that you feel like you've worked hard enough, you can stop and rest. And then shake it out. Change, left leg forward, right leg back. This time you're hugging the thumb. So you made a fist with your thumb on the outside. Now you're making a fist and hugging your thumb. Go slowly. This really ups the ante, especially if you have something going on with your thumb. This is a nice range of motion. It really stretches the thumb and the inside of the wrist. Important to do, if you start out, it feels a little sore, then try a couple more. If it doesn't get better, take a break. And then reverse direction. Sometimes you have to grease everything up and warm it up until uh, that area starts to feel better. So give it a good try, but if it doesn't get any better, take a break. And relax, wow. I hope you guys felt this as much as I did. So again, we're working our forearms, that's our focus, and hand and wrist. So let's give those areas a little bit of a break, shake them out, and work to the feet. Now we're going to start with the right heel. We're going to, the right foot, the heel is lifted, then go on to the tippy toe, curl the toe under, tippy toe, ball, and heel. So all you're doing on the right side is bringing your heel up, stretching the bottom of the foot, come up onto the tippy toes, curl the toes. Uh-oh, her voice is out. I can't is. hear you, Teresa. That went off. So, um, Teresa, you're muted. And, uh, she got muted. So now let's go ahead and take the left foot slightly forward. The left heel comes up, toe, curl under, toe, ball, and heel. Ball, toe, curl under, toe, ball, and heel. Working through the foot, stretching in a comfortable, pain-free range of motion. 
This exercise may cause a little bit of tightness or cramping in the, in the foot, the lower leg, the calf, soleus, or shin. So go easy. And if you feel some of that resistance, go ahead and just give the foot a little shake out and then start back when you feel more comfortable. And down. Excellent. And then now a switch legs, take the right leg forward, and you're just going to tap your toes. Tap the toes of the right leg. You're pressing your hands into your thighs. Your shoulders are down and back. And you're pressing your thighs gently into your hands. So technically, we're doing a plank, a modified plank, a seated plank, while we're working on the tibialis anterior the outer lower leg, the shin muscle, and then take the leg out and in, out and in, tapping out into a half moon. Good. And out and in, let's do a handful more. And switch sides, change legs, bring that left foot slightly in front of the right, adding a little pressure, thighs to hands, hands to thighs, and tap, and tap. And feel free to go more slowly so that you can really activate this outer lower leg muscle to create nice, strong top of the foot, top of the front ankle, and top of this strong muscle that aids us, uh, aids in foot flexion. So that we, when we're walking, we really can lift those toes up and get a good stride. And it's fall prevention. So our toes are lifted nice and tall so they don't catch an uneven sidewalk or roots of a tree. So it's really important for fall prevention. And now take it out and in, out and in, out and in. And just a handful more. And relax. And then march it out. Take a nice deep breath. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, and exhale. Keep the legs going. We're going to tap the knee, the hand to the to the corresponding knee. So right hand, right knee, left hand, left knee. We're going to slow down our march. So it's right and left. Slow motion march. Good. And press. Now try to keep the alignment and your spine lifted really tall, braced, and relatively rigid. You don't wanna be kind of bopping to the beat, although that's fine to do every once in a while, but we're working on alignment, so we want a, a, some structure for the spine and support. And tap. And if it feels like you're getting a little too much in the hip or too much in the lower back or you're getting tired, just don't lift your foot up as high. Or you can just add alternating pressure. Press, press, pressing the thigh into hand, right and left, and then pressing the hand into thigh, right and left. Press or keep up with those marches. Woo, let's go for eight more. And it's eight, seven, keeping the navel to spine, braced alignment, you guys got it. Not easy, you're doing the work, very good. And two more, and relax, woo, march it out. Open up the shoulders, open up the hips, and just let those shoulders swivel, and let those hips march. And two deep breaths, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. All right, if you have a straw and you'd like to use a straw, go ahead and grab it. I'm gonna use my imaginary straw. <laughs> Take your right foot forward, left leg back, and if you don't have a straw, all you're going to do is imagine that you're using one, a little, little tight circle like you're blowing a gentle breeze forward, out, and then, in and back, okay? So we're going to do eight breaths, all breathing in through the straw. We're going to start each series with two cleansing breaths. So just breathe normally, inhale and exhale. And now inhale, exhale fully, close off your nose, whether physically or internally, and breathe in for four, breathe in three, breathe in two, breathe in one, 
hold and breathe out only through the straw four breathe out three breathe out two breathe out one and then breathe normally twice inhale and exhale and again breathe in fully exhale only breathe in through your mouth through the straw close off your nose inhale eight seven six five four three two and hold and breathe out eight seven six five four three two and one and breathe normally change legs let's try the four and eight count with the left leg forward um closing off your nose inhale exhale one more in exhale cleansing breath and breathe in four only through the mouth three and two and one and hold and breathe out four and three and two and one breathe normally inhale and exhale inhale exhale fully and breathe in for eight seven six five four three two one and hold breathe out eight seven six five four three two and one remove the straw place it off to the side and breathe normally nice work and now bring both feet together so your ankles are, are underneath your knees or slightly behind your hands are on your thighs we're going to go with that balloon breathing you can either imagine you're using a balloon or get your balloon in the ready. Balloon is in the left hand if you have one. You're going to inhale fully through your nose and or your mouth, and then exhale fully. And again, inhale, exhale. Breathe in a little more deeply. Inhale, exhale. And last one, inhale, breathe in more deeply. A little more still and exhale and relax a little bit of a normal breath place the balloon in the right hand a little bit of pressure the opposite hand onto the thighs inhale breathe exhale blow up that balloon inhale breathe exhale two more times inhale breathe exhale one more time inhale breathe exhale and relax shake out your arms place the balloon in the left hand let's try six to eight breaths if you're starting to feel dizzy or lightheaded you might want to stick with just four and then just breathe normally i'm going to go up to eight breaths but stop at six if you're feeling a little tentative so inhale exhale inhale exhale inhale exhale inhale exhale inhale try two more exhale inhale exhale if you can do two more inhale exhale one more in and change hands balloon in the right hand two relaxation breaths two cleansing breaths exhale fully inhale exhale inhale a little faster if you want two more one more Two more if you can. One more. And one more, sorry. And exhale. I'm getting a little lightheaded, so I'm getting off my counts. Push your balloon off to the side, march it out. Inhale, two normal breaths. 
If you are feeling dizzy or lightheaded, just take a sip of water, breathe normally, place your hands on your thighs, and just calm your breath down. A normal in and out breath. But that really does help train the diaphragm. It trains the lungs to expand more fully, the diaphragm to uh, drop down more fully to bring more oxygen into the body. So it's very energizing. So nice work, guys. All right. So let's get into our upper body. We warmed it up, loosened it up. We worked it out. Now we're going to add a little more caffeine, a little bit more intensity. Grab your long towel or your dynamic. Step Hello. up in the hand with your right foot. Check it. Is everything okay? Yes, fine. Okay. Right. Hold on to a chunk. And then bring your elbows close to your body. I would suggest doing it with elbows close because it's quite a shoulder workout way out here and it might put a little too much into the elbow. So let's go ahead and bring the elbows in towards the waistline, roll the shoulders back and your arms are at 90 degrees. Also be very mindful of what your wrist is doing. The wrist should be neutral. Try not to let it start in a hang down position or overly curled position or sort of wonky off to the side or twisted, okay? Palms are facing up and the fists are facing up. Roll the shoulders back. You're going to slowly release the wrists and slowly curl in. Release and curl. Release and curl. Think about what the neck and spine is doing. The spine is lengthening, the neck is supporting the head, but that chin is down slightly back, and the upper back of the head is lengthening up and back behind you, and the spine is stretching. Your shoulder blades are contracted. The chest is open, Front shoulders are stretched, back shoulders contracted. Let's go for four more, and three, two, and one. Neutral and relax down. Shake out your hands and just switch sides. This gives your arms a bit of a break. That's a very intense exercise. So um, giving your hands just 10, 15 seconds of a break while you switch over is a, a nice recipe to be recharged and, and a little uh, rejuvenated when we do the other side. So now bringing your elbows in towards the body, shoulder blades down and back. Now you're going to keep that fist, turn the fist down and turn the fist out. Turn the fist down and the fist out. So you're turning your palms down to the floor and out to the side, down to the floor, out to the side. To the best of your ability, the, my palms only go ever so slightly beyond palms up. It's really um, hard to do that range of motion and you don't wanna get more range of motion with your wrists by actually moving the shoulder and elbow because it's sort of a fake added range of motion because it's coming from your shoulders and elbows. And we really want it to come from the wrist and challenge the forearms. And let's do two more and one more, and then lower down. Place the Dynaband on your thighs, shake out your hands, right leg forward, left leg back, right hand forward. Gently pull the fingertips back. Inhale, and exhale, and again, inhale, and exhale. Lower the fingertips down and gently, gently cup the hands and bring it towards, towards your navel. Your fingertips are pointing down to the thigh, but cup them under so they're pointing towards your torso, your navel. Stretch the top core portion of the wrist as well as the forearm. And change legs, change hands. So your left leg forward, left hand forward, shoulder blades back, gently pull the fingertips back. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, feel the stretch throughout the lower arm, the hand and wrist, and relax. And now fingertips down. So you're stretching the top of the hand, the fingertips, as well as the forearm. Gently cup and pull that cupped hand 
and fingers towards your torso. Mild range of motion and a nice gentle stretch. Try not to push too, too much and relax. Shake out the hands. Keep that left leg forward. Step uh, uh, the, the center of the dynaband, uh, step on it with your foot, your left foot. And we're going to do a second set of the wrist curl with the dynaband resistance. 90 degree angle arms, shoulder blades down and back. Your head is in the proper position. Brace your core, release the wrists and curl. Release the wrists and curl. So when you release the wrist, you're really not relaxing. You're just sort of with resistance, you're resisting and releasing the weight or the dynaband and the knuckles down to the floor. And then you're curling up and in. Curl and resist. Curl and resist. Let's just do a handful more. Squeeze that rope tube or towel a little bit harder, working on grip strength. That'll up the ante for the workout as well in the forearm hand and wrist. And one more, and hold. Neutral and slowly lower down. Shake out the arms, change legs. The right foot is stepping onto the center of the dynaband. Your arms are up at 90, same position. Make a fist and just turn the palms down and turn the palms up and as far out to the sides as you can. Down and out. And if you're feeling any pinching or catching or feedback that's not comfortable, modify. Just take a little break or you can continue doing it without the resistance of a band or towel. You still get the workout, it's just a bit milder. And let's go for a handful more. And one neutral, and then slowly lower down. Place the dynaband on your chair back or your thighs, make a fist, circling the wrists around and opening up all the way out to the side and over the head, reverse the circle, come back down, and one more time, reverse the circle, go back up, and reverse the circle, go back down. Right foot forward, left leg back, interlace the fingertips, press the palms towards, uh, towards me, away from your torso. Roll the shoulders back, keep the shoulders down, back of the shoulders activated and contracted, and scapular retraction activated. And stretch your arms out. Feel the stretch just as we did with this stretch. So if this stretch feels more comfortable than this stretch, Go ahead and do, I always generally try to uh, start with a milder stretch and exercise. So you have a little preview of how you can modify. And then inhale and exhale. Keep lengthening that torso way, way up, opening the chest, shoulders down, arms long. And then just change legs and turn your palms so your palms are facing your body, your torso. Try to pull your fingers apart. Now, I don't want you guys to necessarily do this, but try to pull without actually pulling your palms apart. And you're creating a nice lengthening and a workout for your fingers, your hands, the back of your hands, and a little through the palm. Your thumbs are up and very activated. Shoulders, arms are down, sloping below shoulder height. Back of the shoulders contracted scapular retraction, and a handful more. Inhale and exhale. And relax, shake out the arms, march it out, allow your arms to pump forward and back. Shoulders are swiveling within that shoulder joint. Filling the shoulders with breath, filling your hips with breath, and march with toes inward, and march with toes forward, and march your toes outward, channel your internal Charlie Chaplin, right, right here, yeah, 
<laughs> and toes forward and two deep breaths. Inhale and out and inhale and out. All right, let's have a little cardio burst and do our marches. Slow down the marches, do a knee tap. So you have a preview of a couple of modifications. Or, you know, I love sit to stands. It's been a while, guys, right? It's been too long. Let's dust off those sit to stands. So continue with the modifications, or let's get into our sit to stands. If these don't feel comfortable, just modify. So your ankles are behind your knees and directly underneath your hamstrings. You're seated comfortably, but feeling safe on the edge, towards the edge of your seat, the top quarter, and then brace your core. Place your hands on your thighs, push your thighs into your hands, your hands into your thighs, and let's go. Here we go. Inhale, exhale, press up. Slowly lower down. Push into the heels, press up. Slowly press down and back. Come on up and down. And if you'd like to lift your feet off the floor, that's perfectly fine. It's not right or wrong. It's not necessarily harder or easier. As long as you're not using some momentum and rocking like this to get up, I'd really like for you to use your power and strength of your legs. And exhale. Sit gently and quietly, softly, and slowly. So you come up with power and then descend slowly. Come up with power and descend slowly. This way we're actually working twice as hard. We're working on the concentric contraction, contracting the muscles against gravity, the power move, and then the eccentric contraction, slowly lowering down. When the muscles are stretched, you're still contracting them, working them eccentrically. Let's try a handful more. Exhale as you lift, inhale lower. Push into the heels, activate the glutes, and then squeeze your glutes. And let's do two more, and press, and one more, and press, and down. Woo! Go back to the marches, march, march, march. So if you were marching, awesome. This is an exercise. It is a nice cardio exercise, marching, getting that oxygen from your pumping feet to your pumping legs, your nice strong brace torso to your heart and lungs, pumping arms. So this is a workout too. And then slow it down. Touch the right foot to the left, left to the right. Keep going with the marches, keep going with the knee ups. And let's do another set of sit to stance if you want, okay? Now imagine you're going to blow up a balloon. So I don't actually want you to hold on to it this time. Just imagine. Let's go into the first four by pressing your thighs into, into the hands, the hands into thighs. Inhale and blow up the balloon. And then inhale. Exhale. Blow up the balloon. And inhale. Blow up the balloon and inhale one more. And now normal breath. So allow your breath to normalize, come up and down. Focus a little bit more on squeezing your shoulder blades and your glutes, the buttock muscles. Stretching and opening the chest and the spine. And let's get back into some balloon blowing. Here we go, four more. When you exhale out forcefully, really pull the navel deep into your spine. One more. And now allow your breath to normalize. Four more. If you're feeling a bit dizzy or lightheaded, remain seated and just continue marching or doing the slow knee up. And one more. And then relax and just have a seat. March it out. Inhale, arms up. 
exhale, inhale, and exhale. One more, inhale, and exhale. Shake out arms and legs. All right, so we thoroughly worked out our forearms, hand and wrist. We warmed up and made sure our lower body's ready for more work. The sit to stand actually does activate your lower body. So we got a little bit of a added work there. But let's go ahead and grab the extra long towel, like a beach towel or body towel or your Dynaband or tube. Wrap the center of the Dynaband around the ball of your foot. Crisscross. The, the left leg is, uh, rem remains at a 90 degree angle and is your, your support system, as well as your posture and core. Open the chest, shoulder blades, abdominals tight. Pull your elbows close to the body at a 90 degree angle. So your chest is out, shoulder blades are down, and your arms are actually getting a little bit of a workout here. Lift up your heel about an inch or two off the floor and circle your ankle around. So we're working not only the ankle and the lower leg, I'll give you a side view, but you're getting the top of the foot and the toes, the arch of the foot, and reverse. And when you go slowly like this, just add an element of spreading your toes when you flex your foot. And then when your, toe, your foot comes to point, imagine you're picking up a pencil or picking up a marble. Work through the feet and reverse direction again. Notice how the lower leg is starting to work out. The shin is working when you flex the foot with the added resistance and the calf is working. The calf and soleus is working when you point with this added resistance. And relax, place the foot down, remove the Dynaband and just switch legs. Wrap the Dynaband around the ball of the left foot, crisscross, Pull your elbows at 90 degrees, drop the shoulders down and back, squeeze the shoulder blades, nice lifted, lengthened, braced core, lift that left foot up and circle around. Start out with a smaller range of motion and then start to go a bit bigger. Spread your toes out, and when your toes are pointed, imagine you're picking up a marble. And then reverse direction. Keeping the core braced will help support your lower back and this lifted, lifted posture. And relax, place your foot down. Place the Dynaband on your thighs and hands on hips. Circle that right ankle around. Circle, circle, and reverse. Other ankle, circle, circle, and reverse. Slide your heels underneath your thighs and behind your knees, hands onto the thighs, and little heel pumps. Think about pressing the big toe into the floor and activating the arch of your foot. Press and press. Lift your heel up. Try not to allow your feet to sort of open up to the side or roll in or sickle and twist. Keep it right on those train tracks. And stretch your toes right towards me. And lift your heels right up to the ceiling. And let's go for four more. Three and two. And now up and hold. Hold it here way up high. Try to lift your heels up a little higher. If you feel a cramp coming on, take a break. Otherwise, hold for four. Three, two, and one. And then relax. Woo! That is a workout. Shake it out. Let's bring our right foot forward again. Wrap the Dynaband around your foot. Crisscross, drop your 90 degree angle arms right to your rib cage, chest is proud, shoulder blades down, and then flex and point. So you can do this with your foot and leg um, elevated about an inch off the floor. 
So the leg inner elevated a bit and the heel about an inch or so off the floor. Or you can actually keep your foot connected, especially if your hips are a bit tired because of all the other work we've been doing. Lots of work, a lot of sit to stands and marches. And let's go for eight more. And same idea, when you're flexing your foot, spread your toes way out. And when you're pointing your toes, pick up an imaginary marble. So you might actually wanna slow down the flex and point. This is a nice lymphatic pump. It's pumping fluids that might be around, you know, pooling in the ankle by pumping your heel like this, it helps pump the fluids back up into your heart. So your ankles don't swell as much. It kind of keeps everything going, circulation going. And two more, and one. Now flex and hold it, and just try to pull your elbows back a little farther. So you're stretching your foot by adding that resistance of the Dynaband. Leg is straight. Heel is pressing out. Toes are coming up towards the kneecap. The kneecap is coming up towards the front thigh, the quadricep. Stretch, stretch, stretch. And relax. Release the tension gently. And let's just switch legs. You guys are almost done. Nice work. And then crisscross. Spine long. Perfect posture, lift the leg up or not, and flex and point. I have a slight bend in my left knee, but you can keep the leg straight, absolutely. As long as it doesn't feel like it's straining your knee joint, it's perfectly fine. But as long as you're not bending and straightening and bopping like this, like doing a single leg press, it's just isolating the ankle. So we're really focusing on the lower leg. You get a little bit of the upper, but this is primarily lower leg. Calves, soleus, and shins. And again, spread those toes way out in the flex and pick up an imaginary marble on the point. You may need to slow it down to coordinate all of these actions. And let's go for four more. And one more, flex and hold, heel and leg elevated or heel on the floor, leg extended. Bring your toes towards your kneecap and your kneecap towards your thigh, quadricep. Drive your heel away from you and pull a little bit more tension, a little more resistance on that Dynaband. Pull those toes towards your kneecap. Hold, 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 stretch. And slowly release. You can place your Dynaband on your chair back and pedal through the feet. Pedal, pedal, pedal. Getting some circulation back into those hardworking muscles. And now for a good top of the foot, top of the ankle and shin stretch, take your right toe and bring it by the left heel. So the right tippy toes and even the nail beds are right by the heel of the left leg. And then you're pressing the tops of the toes and the tops of your feet down to the floor or the top of the right foot down to the floor. If this creates a cramp or discomfort or it's just impossible to do, just modify. You can come on up and just gently circle the ankle around in space, in air, or do the toe on the floor ankle circle. And then gently work your way up to this pretty intense and kind of hard to do stretch. This is not so easy. And slowly ease back and then change legs. So take the tip of your left toes, tippy toes, place them by the heel of the right leg, curl the toes under so the tops of the feet are coming down onto the floor. And imagine if you have a shoe, and you might have shoes. It's um, very hard to do with shoes on. Um, so you can try later with socked feet or bare feet. Um, also try to keep it on the straight and narrow. In other words, try not to 
allow your knee and your ankle to open out to the side. It's not gonna hurt you, but it doesn't get the, the directly at the top of the big toe and the top of the foot and ankle. And slowly ease back, then go back to the toe and ball heel, and then pedal through the feet. Pedal, pedal, pedal. All right, and then march it out. Inhale and exhale one more time. Inhale and exhale. So we're gonna bring our bodies back to the um, uh, breath and uh, deep breaths and, and, and diaphragmatic breathing. So let's grab your imaginary straw or um, use your straw, place your lips around the straw, or actually let's do our two cleansing breaths. Inhale and exhale, and then inhale, exhale fully, place the straw to your lips and breathe in for four, just from the mouth, three, two, and one hold and exhale only from the straw four from your mouth three and two and one once again inhale one and two and three and four and hold and breathe out one and two and three and four and relax now grab your balloon in the left hand so we'll just do two four counts inhale two cleansing breaths and exhale, and inhale, exhale fully, and deep breath in through the nose, exhale, blow the balloon up, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in a little more deeply, four, exhale fully, four, and breathe normally, again, inhale, exhale fully, and four more. Here we go. Inhale. Inhale. Two more. In. One more in. And place the straw and the balloon down. March it out. Inhale, arms up. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale, stretching out the chest and all of those hardworking intercostal muscles, right leg forward, left leg back, interlace your arms behind. Inhale, look up, exhale, look down. Inhale, look up, exhale, look down. Inhale, look up, and exhale, look down. Same positioning of the legs, interlace the arms behind. Inhale as you bring, bend your elbows and bring your palms towards your chest, look up. Exhale and round. Inhale, stretch your spine, perfect posture. And then exhale and round, like a cat camel. Two more, inhale up, and exhale and round. One more. Inhale up and exhale and round, then all the way up, 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 and relax the arms down. Change legs. Interlace your arms behind you, roll your shoulders back, and then inhale up and exhale down. So you're gently looking up and gently looking down. Comfortable range of motion. Look up and look down. And look up and down. Release the arms, look straight ahead. Start with a really long spine. Inhale, look up and exhale and round. Think of a pelvic tilt. Inhale, look up. Exhale and round. Pull the navel to the spine, cave the chest in. Inhale, look up. Exhale and round. One more. Inhale, look up and exhale and round. Then inhale, arms up, 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 up. Bring your feet right underneath you. Reach up and over to the right to stretch out all those intercostal muscles, the waistline, shoulder, tricep, forearm stretch. And then way up, 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 up. Over to the other side, reaching on the, from the right side, side of the hip, waistline, ribcage, shoulder, arm, forearm, 
and then all the way up and relax. One more time, inhale and exhale. Shake it out, hands and feet. Give yourselves a couple thumbs up and a nice clap and a pat, pat on the back. Excellent job, everyone. Thanks so much for coming to Sit, Stretch, and Tone. And I think we've covered our bases. <laughs> nice job, everyone. Thanks, Teresa. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.